Hello guys, I'm back again. We're going to do, well, first we're going to review some great books that I have here. Um, drawing Cutting Edge Comics. I know some of you are probably uh, familiar with this book by uh, Christopher Hart. Uh, again, there's been like um, a whole bunch of artists that actually contributed to this book. Many of the books from Christopher Hart, a lot of artists, different artists, professional artists actually contribute to uh, Christopher Hart's book. All right, so let's um, let's uh, hopefully it doesn't go upside down like some you know. There are days that it, the phone is always either sideways or upside down. And, stuff. and let me um. Close the vents a little bit. Make myself some tea. All right, first, um, I want to show you two good books, and maybe we'll do some tutorials, uh, stuff that I've been practicing on. Let me get rid of some of these drawings that I, I don't want to mess it up. I plan to put all my drawings in a in a portfolio, but I gotta save a lot of money because I, got, I need to get a whole bunch of portfolios because I got so many drawings but I'm only going to save like the real good ones you know the ones that I really worked hard on and stuff and to get a real good drawing you got to like really really work hard and really focus and spend a lot of time you know like dedicate a lot of time in your art so I, I looked at my last video, usually when I do a, a video, I always check it out to see how it came out. Everything came out, it's just my voice sounded terrible. And I guess I was probably tired, um, like really tired because I hardly, I, like, like I keep uh, mentioning, I, I hardly get any sleep here, especially where I live. And then plus I gotta go to work, this and that. So first we're gonna start out with this book and then I'll show you the rest of the books. And I think I got plenty of batteries. I'm not really sure. So uh, I think it's 60% 60, 60 so that's pretty good. It's an old book. I had it for a long time. Many of these books are pretty old. You see they're ripping up. So I might consider ordering this again if I can find it. I'm not really sure. Maybe I could find it. But it's getting old, you know. So. But the pages are still um, in good condition. And it's all about, you know, classic comics. You know, everything that has to do with classic comics. Let me turn this on a little bit better here. Let me get my tea. Every time when I do my sessions, I definitely want to drink some tea because it kind of helps my uh, my voice better. Especially when you drink something warm. And the problem is that this house, since my brother has the AC, the air conditioning, full blast. So it gets pretty cold in here. So, And it gets hot, you know, because the weather outside, it's like crazy hot. So... But unfortunately, it is what it is, you know, too much AC could be bad for you, so. And, uh, when I was in New York, I didn't need, um, too much AC. In New York, they didn't have, um, well, way back in my time, 
it was just actually in a summer. I mean, it was like maybe three months of hot weather. That's about it. And uh, we all had to use like a fan, a ceiling fan or uh, air conditioning, air conditioner that's actually in the window, you know. But here, um, everyone has full blast cold AC. The AC here is really cold. So I think that's why I've, um, I, I guess, sick so very easily. And, uh, and it has nothing to do with my illness or any of my um, problems that I have. It's actually too much, a you know, when you have too much uh, AC on you and stuff. All right, guys. So let's get with, with this book. Let's get ready. So um, basic uh, heads, pretty much like the Loomis method. And this one I was analyzing yesterday. I was listening to some music at the same time and analyzing this. And um, since I've been uh, doing a lot of research on the Loomis method and looking at everybody's techniques on YouTube, so now I can figure out how, how this is done. So um, I actually did it right here. So what you do here, which I'm gonna show you, as you can see, everything is like three parts. You see, like this, there's like um, one, it's supposed to be uh, another line here, but I guess the artist didn't do another line here, but actually it's like three parts, one, two, three parts. So I did the same thing. What I did was I did the, um, the circle and a vertical line, and then I did the horizontal line, but just like the Loomis method, the center line right here, which that's going to be uh, the eyebrow line. But this is a little bit different, guys. Remember, if you observe this, the eyebrow line is this right here. See? And then the eyes fall down right here. Not in the middle, but right around here. And if you want, you could make a line right around here to indicate where the eyes fall and then the nose right here underneath where the circle is. And of course, this is right here. Start uh, with the basic outline of the head, which is the combination of the skull and jaw. And I'm talking about this right here. And um, note that over the half of the head in the skull area is represented by a globe. This is what they're talking about right here. Second, the eyebrows fall a little more than halfway down the globe. So yeah, of course, right here, see? Now the Loomis method is this, you see? So I did two uh, segments here. I did the Loomis method here, which let me write this down, Loomis. And this is the, uh, the regular Martin comic book uh, style. So this is a little different. The eye actually falls right around here. So if you want, you can make underneath the, the eye right here. See, so the eye will fall here. So let's do this. Um, let's practice with this. And then I'll show you the rest of the book. Because everything takes a lot of practice, you know. So it's, uh, it's not easy doing this stuff. So. And of course, you really got to have a lot of um, patience and peace and quiet when you do all this kind of stuff. So luckily, it's pretty quiet out there. There's not too much noise. It's early in the morning. But I'll bet you anything it's going to start probably maybe in three or four hours. A lot of noise because people love to make noise. All right. So here we have the circle right here. Vertical line. And just like the Loomis method, it's actually right here, but the eyebrow is going to be around here. So the Loomis method, which I'm going to do it apart, the eyebrow is in a in the center of the circle. Okay. 
Now we're going to do the nose line. We're going to actually visualize that the eye is around here. But just do the nose line better. The nose line should be around here, see? And then the chin. You can visualize, you know, your mind will be able to see all this. The mouth will be here and the chin will be here. Let me drink my tea and let me add some cranberry juice. Just a little bit of cranberry juice. All right. So I'm gonna do this in ink so you can see it more clear because usually the um you can't really see too much good you know the uh, the details on penciling so I'm gonna do it in ink so that way. You guys understand what I'm doing here. Center line, but this one is a little bit different. Then the nose line should be here, the mouth right around here, and the chin right around here. And then the Loomis method is right here. The eyebrow line is in the center, which is a horizontal line, okay? Now let's work with the Loomis method and then at the same time we're going to do this method at the same time. The Loomis method, the nose actually falls around here. It's sort of like a, like a box shape, okay? Sort of like a box shape. And the hairline goes right here. And the chin line, of course the mouth goes right here. And the chin goes right here. So this is the Loomis method right here. Now this Martin Classic, uh, I would say... Marvel or DC style because I, I'm not really sure what to call this method, but anyway, it's almost like the Loomis method, but it's just a little bit different. So now we're gonna draw the outline of the head, of the face, you know, the whole sort of like an egg shape. So it should look like an egg shape. And that's the same thing that you're gonna do here. You're gonna do the same shape here, just in the Loomis method, but the Loomis method is gonna be a little different because <clears throat> the circle, let me drink something here. Okay. When the Loomis method, it actually, you're going to actually slice and it divides right here, see? And it tapers in all the way down. Okay? All the way down to the chin. And it's the same thing like this, except that it's different over here, okay? Try to understand that over here it's a little bit different. So I'm gonna make this in ink so you guys could figure out what I'm trying to do here. It's the same shape as this, except that this is, is taking the whole circle. So it's, it's creating a different effect, okay? So now what we're, what, what, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working with um, the rest of the features, which are the eyes. We're gonna start doing measurements and all that. So we'll do uh, the Loomis method. So the Loomis method, um, you can start with the eyebrows or you can start with the nose. I usually like to start with the nose. Then I'm going to make another line. Like that. And if you want to make this more simple when you're doing the Loomis method, you could just do it like this. The center line, the eye line underneath, the nose line, the mouth and the chin that's it okay that's sort of like a shortcut so then we got the shape of the face and remember it's supposed to be tapered in because of course when you look at a face for example this face right here you're looking at the face it's tapered in you see if you look at the sort of like a, a line here there's a line that goes straight down this way and it's tapered in and you can see it right here very clearly right here so so we're, we're going to work with the Loomis method first, and then we're going to work with this method, okay? So pay attention to the way I'm doing this now. So I'm going to start with the nose. Bridge of the nose. And if I want the same thing that you see here, it's sort of like, uh, I would say, more like uh, the Riley method, kind of, for the eyes. So I could do it with the Loomis method, too, at the same time.
that would be the segments for the eyes so all I got to do right here on top of this line here from the corner of the nose I'm gonna go up okay and then I'm gonna start doing the eyes and then the other eye over here this whole arc line over here is gonna actually help you you know uh, avoid the distance from here to here from here to here so if I were you I will concentrate a lot with this uh, after you do the eyes of course after you do the eye line here you do this arch that goes up then from the corner of the nose you go up and that would be your eyes right there see now you can go further down to the nostrils shape of the nose whatever and you can uh, start working with the mouth and remember that the mouth with the Loomis method is actually leveled down underneath where the circle is and you can start shaping you know the contour of the shape of the face so let's work with that this will be the the hairline so you can use this for reference too if you want you can start shaping the hairline upward all the way to the top of the hair right here and you can add the ears remember that the ears fall on the same level where the eyes are and then do uh, the planes over here you see that actually causes what the cheek lines are so when you do that that actually helps form the shape of the cheekbones see and you can fix the chin a little better and then you could add um, the eyebrows okay let me drink some tea here Okay, so now we're gonna do this technique on this over here. And remember that this is gonna be different from this. So the eye level would be a little further down here. Mark off the nose first, go up, do that arch, like that, just like you see over here. To the ears okay and the mouth should be around here and of course I think I gotta fix the jaw just a little um, probably make it a little bit longer all the way down I think okay so now I uh, observe this and this and I actually measure where those eyes are gonna be so the eyes since I you know I'm gonna Work with the nose first. Corner of the nose will go up. This will be the center of my nose. And the eyes would fall right here. So I'm going to make, you know, actually lower that arch down a little bit. And I got my eyes right there, see? And then notice that the eyebrows are a little bit lower so the eyebrows are not like the Loomis method that's on the top right here see it's just a little bit lower so remember this is a different method now I don't know which one might work for you guys I kind of like the Loomis method better it's simple I mean it's more I wouldn't say simple because I know many of you um, are struggling a lot with the Loomis method and uh, it's not easy, you know, I, I got to admit, you know, it took me years to figure out to do the Loomis method, of course, you know. So you got two options. You can do it this way or you can do it this way. 
It really doesn't matter. So let's pick another face or something. Here we have the woman, and the woman is almost the same thing, like the same uh, technique. Perhaps maybe this might uh, be helpful. Let's let's give this one. Let's see how this one works. Vertical line. And you can tell that the line, there's no arch here, only where the eyes are. The line goes downward. Here's the line for the nose right here. Here's the line for the mouth and the line for the chin. So let's do the lines first uh, to figure this out. This would be where the eyes would be right here. This is a little bit complicating, but anyway, it's always good to try try it out, you know, try a different method, you know. Let's see how this goes. And the chin should be around here. Maybe let's start this a little. This pencil is more dark, you know, more darker, so this actually helps better. Okay, so now <clears throat> We do another eye line here. We'll actually indicate where the eyes are. That arch. You'll do the arch. And then notice that it's sliced. You see? It's sliced. And it's giving you the shape of the head. So we're going to slice it off a little bit. Now, I don't know if this is going to work. You know, it's always good to try something different, you know, all the way down to the chin. And then we'll visualize the nose right here. That would be the nose right there. And the eyes. So far, so good. And of course, the eyebrows are passing this line right here. So we want to make sure that we get this right. OK, now we'll do the mouth line right here. The bottom of the lip. So it looks a little bit kind of the same segment as you see over here. Pretty much the same. A little bit close though, not that much, but a little bit. Okay, now this one is sort of like using lines at the same time and you're using sort of like a circle, actually two circles. You have one circle here and I'm not gonna try this one. This one is gonna take me, I don't know, it's gonna be a mission trying to do this. So um, notice that the line is not in the center, but you see, I rather just use the Loomis method better when it comes to the profile. The Loomis method is way, way better. It's the same thing like you were doing this, except that the face is gonna be this side. So yes, it's better to use the, the Loomis method. So I just make a line this way, then a line this way, and this will be the front of my face right here. Then I'm gonna do the planes, of course. The eyes right here. The ears will be around here. The back of the head is where the bottom of the earlobe is, straight back. And then I'm gonna start working with, because um, I haven't done a profile in a long time, but do the frame of the front of the face, which is the forehead, the inner socket, 
that little part that goes in where the eye is, the nose, the mouth, the chin goes out, and then I don't have to worry about this line anymore. That's just only the segments. So I'm just going to bring up that jaw just a little bit closer to where the ear is, you see? The hairline. The artery of the neck. The Adam's apple. So that's definitely the uh, classic Loomis profile right there. The eye is just a little bit too big. So if I want, I could just make a line like this and just, you know, make the, the eye a little smaller, bring in the eyebrows. And this line that I did here before, which is the planes, that would be my cheekbones. So it'll look like the, uh, kind of like the average, a little bit like uh, like a, that Neil Adams profile. Or I would say maybe like John Buscema or something. And then make the crease where the corner of the nose and then you could, you know, erase all these construction lines that you don't need, you know. All the lines that you don't need, you erase it. That's it. Okay? Then you add more details. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so now we uh, did the uh, profile and we actually analyzed how to do the, uh, the front view. Two types. So you have an idea how to do this book, except that if you do get the book, um, try to focus more on the Loomis profile better. This is not going to work. Maybe it might work if you read it good, I guess. And I read it, but I still can't even get it. So, um, All right, so these are just heads and tilts and turns. Different uh, poses right here. And you can see the line segments right here. Here we have uh, planes and faces and on, the, on the female. Here is a face looking down, further down, looking up, looking more up, and here's the back side of the head. I don't know if you can see that. And I keep forgetting that the phone is vertically, so I gotta like go like this, go like that. Uh, and these are more faces, various angles, you see? Very, very classical comic book style. Here we have intense, intensity and expressions. And it's giving you the nose and the yes, like always. The nose, which is better, which is a better uh, picture. So this one is okay. The problem is this one is more dramatic right here. See, here's a girl with an umbrella. She's getting wet but you see a more close up with the umbrella and everything and the rain and you see more expression. So it gives a, a better story. So, so this is very important. And actually it's, um, it's kind of like composition. You know, everything here that you see here is sort of like composition. Here we have nose and yes over here again. This is okay, but this is better. You see it has more drama in the face. This one is all right but this one is better. The, the laugh seems to be more extreme and it's got more character. This one is all right, but this is better. This one is okay, but this is way better. It's got more drama, more action in the face, more expression. And she, you can actually see that she's got, you know, more anger in her face and the mouth actually stretched a little bit more and stuff. This one is about angry, but it's okay, this one, but this one has got more power into it, you see? More rage on this picture. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll bring it a little bit closer. 
Then we got this one. No, yes. No, yes. See the difference from this face and the difference from this face. This, this face has got more like a dramatic look on the face. So it's way, way better. This one, definitely this one. And this is a, an impact, like somebody gave him a punch. So it's not really telling like he's really feeling it. This one, he really feels it. See the difference from this picture from this picture? Yeah, so they're giving you an idea, you know, pretty much what to do. Um, here's the classic hero body. Here's the woman right here. These are different poses. And you see, these are good proportions, except, you know, it's not, usually real women don't have long legs like this. I mean, some do, but not all of them. Because they're all types of women. <clears throat> they're drawing the more like the, hero, like, I would say the Heroian body type of woman, you know what I mean? Like the barbarian, the Amazon type of woman, you know what I mean? But this is more like comic book style women. This is not what you're going to see, like how Andrew Loomis draw his women. Or Norman Rockwell draw his women. And Alex Ross. Because Alex Ross draws a lot like Alex. Uh, how do you call it? Andrew Loomis. Here we have the hands. Different poses of hands. You can see the planes on the hands. There's some planes over here. I don't know if you can see that. And you can see actually the lines. The segments that divide the sections of the fingers and the hands and the palm. So you see it right here, see? Here we have the woman's hands. Notice that the woman hands are more feminine, more different. Uh, you know, they're more different from the man's hand. So it's very more thinner, more grace. You know, it's, uh, you, you'll see the difference, you see? Right here is a woman's hand, but these are segments that you see here. Construction lines actually form the length of the fingers. You can see that this part, just like I showed you the other day, you have a, a sort of like a triangle shape here and a, a box shape here. So there's, you can see like a curve here and a curve here. And it's sort of like a triangle, but more like a curve. Now this one is a little bit different. Then you see the segments. And then right here, the end of the fingers right here. So actually, the fingers actually pass this line right here. So, And what's good about this, that actually shows you hands holding a cup, you know, a teacup, a saucer, which is a plate, and at the same time, a card. You know, I did that. I drew. You will notice I, I did do uh, some sketching on... But this book is really old. This is when I started... Like I said, nothing messy, it's just construction that I do. This is a great uh, way of doing feet. So yeah, this book will actually show you a little bit of everything here. <clears throat> the Anatomy for a Comic Book Artist. That's a fantastic drawing. Again, the legs are a little bit too long. But it's just comic book style, you know what I mean? What can you expect? And here's the, uh, the tough guy's head, the skeletal head. We have, and actually this one is actually drawn by Christopher Hart. Uh, and I recognize this is, uh, yeah, his art. You can actually tell his art. I could recognize his stuff, like, very simple. Uh, you could tell that's him, too. He drew this, Christopher Hart. And you can see the, the details of the muscles on the face. Here we have the tough guy's body. Let me add some more water on this one.
you can see this is more like sort of like cartoony but you know it's it ha actually shows you uh, a lot of muscle details and stuff so here's some words here that we could actually learn the trapezoids deltoids that one i know already so far sometimes i forget the tricep triceps i definitely know already and this one that's a very hard word to uh pronounce brachetodulius whatever that is it's the the main parts of the anatomy and stuff this is also important too when you're drawing the um the rib cage there's like three parts you see this is the part that actually goes underneath the arm and usually i do that mistake sometimes so silly when i draw the figure with the arms let me wait to that okay when the, i draw the figures um the hands going up i kind of sometimes forget this part right here this is the back side of the figure the body in profile. Overlooked arm muscles, drawing the angles, different angles, the female form. Again, this is sort of like cartooning. This is, you're, you're not gonna, exp you're definitely not gonna see this like, you know, perfection, like Loomis would draw his, uh, female figures here's the profile there's another book i want to show you guys that it's got a lot of stuff but i guess the problem with that book is it's got so many pages it's going to take a long time for me to show you that book so uh, I got to wait for a while um, because I want to finish a couple of books with you guys first I'll do the legs but this is more like the Christopher Hart the way he draws his figures the big guys So in order to draw a big guy like this, um, I know many of you guys love to draw big hokey superheroes. And too bad I can't see, no I can't see that, so I'm gonna have to, uh, hold on a second. Let me get my drawing board right here. <clears throat> <coughs> All right, let me do this right. fix this for a second before I forget all right. okay all right in order to draw something like this all right so I don't know which technique I should use for this but let me see I I did a couple new ones that I actually did here so let's see let's use uh, this one right here but it's gonna be a big character so I will start off you know with the center of the body of course and he's got a big uh, chest area the only problem with this is that his head is like way up now I'm gonna try to make this a little better let me see circle for the hip area right there do the belt line add some a little bit contour which is going to be the hip area right here always remember the circle first before you do the hip area now I can start doing um, the sockets and when I'm when I'm seeing sockets it means like the opening part of where the leg is 
Let me give you a better understanding of this. Um, hold on a second. I have it right here. Hold on. Okay, so that way you guys understand what I mean when I'm talking about sockets. This is another book I'm going to show you, but this is this this is very long. This book, so this is going to be another video. So let me just give you an idea of sockets. This part right here, see, sort of like sockets that actually connects with the leg, like the opening part. This is a socket right here, see, socket right here. Let me show you a better one so you can understand. Here, see, this is the hip area, but you can see the sockets right here, you see? This is what I mean by sockets. Okay, so that's what we're doing right here, except that <clears throat> the way I did it is a bit different because I started the belt line, the outline, and then I did the sockets. So now I'm just gonna start bringing out the legs. And this is a big dude, so we wanna make him bulky. So I'm gonna do the sockets for his shoulders right here. That's where the shoulders are going to be at. Then I'm gonna give a big hint of those big shoulders. Maybe bring in a big joint in like that, see? Then I'm going to make the top of the shoulders right here. Uh, there's a name for it, but I just uh, forgot the name of it. But instead of making the head too high, I'm going to just bring it down a little bit. Just a little bit. And a little bit more bigger than what you see over here. Because the proportions on this is not perfect, perfect. So, now I'm going to do the arms again big joints because this is going to be a big dude okay so we got so far so good now i could actually close in from the legs down so all i have to do is make an outline like that another outline like this make uh, the crotch a little bit bolder kind of like bolder remember when you're doing women women are something like this uh, like for example when you're doing women the hips a little bit far out and then the sockets right here it's sort of like a V shape something like that okay but when you're doing a guy the crotch area is a little bit bulgy like that just a little bit bulgy see the difference so that's what we're doing with this dude right here so gonna start making the rest of the body and uh now i'm gonna see if i can do the muscles I'm going to do his costume uh, at the same time. So I'm going to do a little bit of everything. The costume and at the same time the, you know, the biceps, the muscles and all that. The way I draw the rib cages are a little bit more different. So mine might look a little bit different. So be aware of that. Now I'm going to do the arms. I'm gonna make oval shapes, like very lightly, you know, very lightly oval shapes. Right here also, oval shapes. The arms go straight down. The other arm actually is on this side right here. And okay, so now we have an idea how my position is going to look a little bit right there see but you can see that this this the anatomy it's a little bit you know kind of way off a little bit i don't know he didn't do that so good i'm going to try to make it a little bit better but the problem is that 
I don't have too much space. So I'm just going to do some type of hint of the leg down below. So yeah. So I'm going to try to do a couple of details, but what I'm trying to is try to finish here is the um, the muscles. You know what I mean? That's um, my main goal is to do the muscles. Let me see if I got this right. Yeah, my hand. I'm going to leave the hands for last. Now the head. Actually, the head is kind of like tilting downward. So I'm going to make, like you see the head like this, since he's looking down, I got to make a curve going down like that, see? So that's what I'm going to try to do here. And then the nose will be here. So I can start working with the shape of his face. The ears, the head. So it's not going to look exactly like him, but you know, it's, I'm just giving you an idea how to do this correctly. And of course, he's got a lot of muscles underneath his neck, but you can tell this is not made right. I don't know. It's just like, it's too exaggerated. So I'm going to try to make it. Of course, uh, a bulky person, the neck is going to be, it's going to look big. So you got to stretch this side over here. But there's something very wrong the way he did the, the veins. I don't know if I'm going to do that, but. But you guys will get the idea what I'm trying to do here, so. Now we'll do some muscles on his legs. And he's got a lot of muscles. But again, this guy exaggerated a lot. You can tell it's a lot of exaggeration in his drawing. But you know, I can't really see too much on this side because of this character on the foreground. And then, so you got an idea of pretty much how you do a big guy. Always remember that when you're drawing a bulky character, the head is going to be a little bit smaller. You know? Like when you draw the Hulk, if you were to draw the Hulk, start off the body first, you know? And then the Hulk has a small head on the on his body. So always keep in mind that, you know, the size of the body, when you're drawing bulky characters, it's very different from an average figure. Okay, so we got that out of the way. Uh, let's continue with the book. Let me save this for later. Here we have more muscles, extreme veins. When you're doing muscles and veins at the same time. Now, you don't see this a lot in comic books. You know, some comic books, you will see some type of veins. I know the one that draws uh, some veins is uh, David Finch. He does veins a lot on his figures. Here's more characters over here, sort of like uh, alien type. You can tell this is very, very exaggerated. Let me get my tea. Let me turn off that AC. some tea might help me out here look at the muscles on this character right here awesome 
And this guy looks like he has this big tail coming out from his the top of his buttocks. You can see the muscles on the buttocks, on the legs, on the arms. This is really cool right here. <clears throat> this is sort of like a, a bulldog mutant or something. We have the eyes. And here we got um, different expressions of eyes. Mad looking, determined, doubtful, insertive, hesitant, uh, intentive, uh, dreamy, uh, intense, and pained. Resting, afraid, lost in thought. And some artists actually start with the uh, circle and the ge geometric shapes and then they add shape to the eyes and if you want you can go check uh you can scroll down trust me i got so many videos um you can see that i actually did a video on doing eyes with the ball and without the ball so you might be able to find that and maybe you might like it and the lips also i got videos that i've done if you guys are interested in drawing lips there's like maybe two videos I did in drawing lips. One has music in the background. I think both have um, music in the background, not really sure. Here we have not just another pretty face. That's what it says here. I guess what they mean is that a pretty face can get very evil. Like this mean mad ugly here we have turning a pretty face into sexy and right here see <clears throat> pretty cool and we right here okay this one is transforming a regular woman Going back to the documentary from John uh, Matt Walsh. Hey, Matt Walsh, this is a woman right here. If you want to know what is a woman, this is what a woman is. <laughs> oh my God, I, I just get a kick out of how our society has come to. All right, here we got sexy clothes and uh, you know costumes. If you want to do costumes, this is sort of like an Egyptian lady. That's pretty cool. I like the way he did this. Here we have a sexy pose right here. And this type of sexy pose is pretty easy to do. If you could, you know, study and analyze it, it has sort of like a, a nice curve going this way. There are times that you can start drawing the body just by doing the outline of the side of the body. You could do it that way too. It actually works out. Let me give you a quick demonstration with this one. I'll do it right here. So we're gonna do this one and um, see, it's like we'll do the, the side of her body like that. And then you can start working with the details. This will be the chest area, the belt line right here. Do another circle for the hip area. And we got the V shape right there. If you want, you can do the line coming down, or you could just simply do the line and the form at the same time. That way you won't get lost. So you can do it that way. And then uh, from the uh, oval here, which is the um, chest area, the rib cage, she's got these breasts, one actually popping out this way, one kind of like forward 
And of course, this is sort of like a twist and a three quarter view. So you got to remember to do the uh, grid line, which is um, that center line that most artists actually use when they're doing a three quarter view. So you can do that. And then, uh, of course, the arms are a little bit exaggerated, but I'm going to try to make it a little bit better. And her face is around here. So to get an idea of this, I mean, because this is a big drawing, so I'm going to have to use a big pen for this one. Where is my big pen? Here it is. The outline of her body, see? Just focus on the outline right there. Do the belt line. Do the um, torso by using an oval. Draw another oval for the hip area, like that. Then do the V shape, which is gonna be the crotch area. Then make the line going down, at the same time the form. And here we have her breasts, this one popping out, sort of like a teardrop. And then this one coming forward at us, looking at us. The breast is looking at us. Just kidding. All right, so then this will be the arm. And then the head. Like hey, that, see? So you can do any type of pose just by observing the, uh, usually the center line is in the center of the body, but you know, in order to get a good pose, you can actually see it. Again, you could actually uh, do the center line like this, right? And then do the outline of her body like this if you want, you can do it that way. Okay, so we got an idea how to do that. Here's another bulky character. And of course, you can tell that this, uh, the body's like really big on the top and the arms are really big. And of course, this has to do with a lot of shapes here. There's a big oval shape here, a big oval shape here, another big oval shape here. And of course, sort of like a triangle shape here for the head. And even though the face is over here and then the oval would be over here and then you can tell by this leg and this leg he did some type of cylinder right there so let me give you an idea how he did this one show you how he did this one I'm going to start the body first instead of doing the uh, head. That's going to confuse me a little bit. And I do the circle for the uh, hip area. The belt line, downward. And then I'm going to do, since that leg is sort of like foreshortened. Oh, the alarm is going off. Okay. Since that leg is foreshortened, I have to bring it out a little bit more. So I'm going to do the socket, of course, that opening of the socket. This socket is going to go inward, right? And then make a line coming down. Make the form, make the joint right here. And then since this is foreshortening, I'm going to do the line at the same time. But at the same time, I'm going to do uh, for shortened make a bigger joint over here because it's good. This leg is coming at us more than this leg so um, So you guys get an idea how to do this And then we'll do the bottom of the leg Like that And then we'll finish off this leg here And now we could go With the top of the body for some reason or something, when I do my figures, I actually like to work with the legs first and then go back with the arms and then leave the head for last. So, I mean, you could do it that way too if you want. 
I'm going to start doing the, uh, the body. He's got big muscles and big biceps here. And do the chest area right here. And do sort of like a triangle shape for that top of the head, that even, even though the face is around here. Let's do some hint of the uh, ex, you know facial expression here. He's got a big smile here or something, I don't know. So it looks a little bit like it, not that much, but anyway, something is something. So, so I'm gonna do this again in ink. So because maybe in ink you can see more better. The sockets, and this one is facing down. Bring out the line, the form, the joint. This one is further back. Of course, this leg is more back here. And this leg is coming at us just a slight, slightly, not that much. Okay, so we have an idea. Then we go up, we do the big, big joints for the shoulders. And then triangle shape for his face, of course. He's got these, I don't know, big horns coming out this way. The chest area. The biceps from the chest area right here. Then give give form to the the arms and then close it in here and always remember when you're doing the bottom part right here see there's like a curve even though you don't see the curve here so you just do a curve like that see and then you can finish off the crotch area the details of the pants some detail of the muscle there's a muscle that actually goes straight down on the leg and there's another mu a muscle that goes straight down where the kneecap is so we'll do it in ink so you guys understand what i'm doing here Okay, so you got an idea, see? It's pretty much like it. All right, so let's uh, turn the page and um, analyze the rest of this book. Here we have eyes, but these eyes are done by um, Hart. Hart did this too. Christopher Hart did these uh, drawings here too, these overall design. Here we have a three-quarter view, which is really cool. Here we have a front view, but it's sort of like a bullet shape. It looks like a bullet shape. And you can tell that there's uh, planes on this. Now, I don't know if I should try this out, but um, I'm pretty sure you guys have an idea of how to do this. Here we have I think this one is made by uh, Daryl Banks. Um, I'm not really sure. He draws like this, sort of like an oval shape, and he does the the planes of the face. And you can see the construction of the planes right here. Here, yeah. this is. Oh yeah, no, this is different. This is Dan Nor Dan Norton did this. Now I understand. Okay, Dan Norton did this. Yeah, I thought it was uh. Daryl Banks, because he draws something like this. It's Dan Norton, because I wrote it down right here. Dan Norton did this, yeah. Pretty creative stuff, I gotta tell you. Discovering your personal style.
the uh, starting point. You can tell this is like perspective. Thor, like you're looking down at the person and uh, foreshortening at the same time, but more like perspective. Brian Denham did this one. RV Valdez did this drawing right here. Talent Caldwell did this one. Nate Van Dyke did, um, did this drawing right here. Like I said, um, these books by Christopher Hart are contributed by a whole bunch of different artists working with the cutting edge inker from the pencils to inking. Great pose right here. Fantastic. I still got to show you guys uh, the book from Steve Rude and Cardwell, I think his name is. I'm not really sure. It's a book, How to Deal with Ink and Drawing Ink. And uh, I'm not sure. I think I did a video on that. But if, I'm going to have to uh, show, you, show you again because back then... I didn't have a phone holder, so I might uh, probably show you the video again. Ah, the book, sorry. There's no way I can show you that video again. I just got to show you the book again. Because inking is very, very important when you're doing comics. And that's something I definitely need a lot of practice in. Thinking. Advanced color techniques. Combinating genres. Genres, I don't know what that means. Here we have the power of perspective again. Here's perspective. Here's for shortening for impact. So it's giving you different options, which pose is better. This one is good, and this one is definitely good. I mean, they're all good except for this one. This, I don't know, it's just dull, you know, it doesn't look very good, but this one and this one and this one looks okay. This one and this one, and this one looks, especially this one. I would pick, out of all this, I would definitely pick these two because it's got more impact, more power, um, instead of this. So this one looks good. These two. It says it right here. No foreshortening. Foreshortening begins. Good foreshortening and maximum foreshortening. You see? So it's giving you an idea. And here we have the lady right here. There's no foreshortening over here. Foreshortening begins. And good foreshortening. And this one is maximum foreshortening. So you can see the hand is actually coming towards the camera. You know, it's coming towards us. So that's pretty good. Here we have a guy ready to pull a punch on somebody, but you can see the arm going back more. So these two look okay more than this one. If anything, I would pick these two better. It looks way better. Good for shortening and maximum for shortening. Yeah, for shortening is uh, very, very important when it comes to comics. Types of perspective. Here we have an exterior one point perspective. This is actually the ship that you see here. This is sort of like a ship. And this is the, uh, the buildings. You can see a little bit of the foreground. But if anything, this looks more foreground than anything else.
Here we have perspective, uh, interior one point perspective. Everything converges at a single point. Therefore, this has to be one point perspective. One point perspective can be an effective tool in organizing a scene. It's simplicity and narrowness. Narrowness. Uh, focus and keep and the reader's attention very directed. It doesn't allow the eye to wonder. It keeps things urgent. Okay, here we have interior two-point perspective right here. This one is a distorted interior two-point perspective. You can see, very distorted. That's me, I drew that. <laughs> and that's me, I drew that too. I'm trying to figure out this one. Interior two-point perspective. Distorted interior two-point perspective. Yeah, it's, this book has got a lot on perspective. Designing the page, okay. Tells you pretty much what to do here. And here we go, using your eyes as a camera. You see, it's sort of like storyboarding. It gives you an idea of which is better, dull, good, ordinary, better. See? This one, it's all right, but this one has got more drama. You see the difference? They're actually showing you different panels. The same situation, but a better composition. You can see the alien grabbing the lady here in the spaceship, but you see it more dramatic on the next picture right here. See? So... If anything, this is better than this. This is better than this. And this is better than this. <clears throat> and here we have using the uh, distance as the uh, dramatic tool. Of course, this is all like storyboarding. Definitely storyboarding here. The extreme close-up. low impact versus high impact panels uh, flat versus uh, dramatic panels the variety isn't always more exciting trying to do too much designing the dramatic fight scene Finding an, uh, a unifying th theme. That's me, I did that. Here we have clean lines and angles of figures right here. Um, actually, this is more like comic book style right here. It tells you the difference right here, see? The drawings, you can tell why the drawings is different. This is more like the animation cartoon style right here, see? And it gives you an idea with the faces right here. This is more like cartoon. This is more like comic book style. Comic book style and cartoon. Animation more. It says right here, animated style. Clean lines and angles. Um, simplifying the head. The difference from a cartoon to more like a comic book style. Cartoon, comic books. No, cartoon and comic book style. Cartoon and comic book style. Cartoon, comic book style. And on the body, you can tell it's definitely cartoon. And this is more like comic book style. The weird and unexplained. Realistic versus um, stylized animals. Stylized backgrounds. You can tell this is more like cartoon and this is more like comic book style. All right, we finished with this book already. So um, you could probably find this on eBay. Um, I had this for years. Oh my God, I think like maybe 20 years. 
or more, I think, maybe 25 years by Christopher Hart, Drawing Cutting Edge Comics. Very old book, but I'm pretty sure that I could probably find a brand new one again and maybe used, but in better condition than this because this is like actually ripping it, you know, ripping apart right here. So, all right, so let's go on with the next book, guys. This one, actually, you know what? I'm going to save this for the next video. Yeah, let's, let's, um, because I, I only have, let me see how much percentage I have on this. Oh, okay, 44%. But let me load this one up and I'll continue with the other one.